Welcome to Sheridan at Noon. I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer with your midday update. More cold weather for Oakville in the surrounding area as an extreme cold weather alert is issued by the Halton Regional Health Department. The alert is issued when temperatures are expected to drop below minus 15. Though anyone can be affected by the cold weather, those most at risk include adults over 65, infants, those who work outside, and homeless people. Halton Health is reminding everyone to minimize risk when traveling by dressing appropriately, covering exposed areas, and when using a car to have a car survival kit ready. To find out more information about the cold weather alert, visit Halton.com. A nine-year-old Brampton boy has died after being shot by a stray bullet. Kashan Williams was in his bedroom around 10.30 last night when he was hit in the head by a stray bullet. He was rushed to the hospital for sick children in Toronto, but Williams died from his injuries early this morning. Field Constable George Tudo said the incident was random and police are investigating. Police officers also seized a taxi near the scene and questioned the occupants. Constable Tudo says they are considered witnesses. Police are asking anyone with information to come forward. Rob Ford is just one day from learning his fate. A three-judge panel is reviewing Mayor Ford's appeal bid in connection with his conflict of interest case. The Superior Court found Ford violated conflict of interest laws late last year. If two of the judges find no fault with the Superior Court ruling, Ford will immediately be out of office. Deputy Mayor Doug Holliday would become acting mayor. The council will have 60 days to decide whether to appoint a replacement for the mayor or hold an election. If two judges find the Superior Court made an error, Ford will remain in office. After 43 days, Attawapiskat Chief Teresa Spence has decided to end her hunger strike. The announcement comes after the AFN, the NDP and Liberal caucuses announced that they had agreed to back a list of commitments supporting aboriginal issues. The overall health of Spence is said to be fine, but she was taken to an Ottawa hospital last night. A health report is expected to be released later today. A ceremony was expected to take place early this morning on Victoria Island to commemorate the hunger strike, but was cancelled. Other ceremonies planned throughout the day are expected to go ahead. The federal and Ontario government are working together to help Toyota produce hybrid cars in Canada. Toyota announced last year that they would be developing the RX350 Lexus Hybrid in Cambridge, Ontario. The two governments are expected to provide up to $34 million of the $100 million project. The financing was announced at the company's plant in Cambridge, Ontario Wednesday by Prime Minister Stephen Harper and Premier Dalton McGuinty. This project, combined with another Toyota government-backed project, is expected to produce more than 500,000 vehicles and employ more than 7,000 people in Ontario. U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta announced yesterday women in the military will be allowed to serve in combat positions. They will join women in Canada who already serve in combat. The U.S. Army League currently excludes women from about 25% of the jobs. Women make up about 14% of active duty military. 152 female soldiers have been killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. Good things come in twos, and for Oakville resident Keith Childerhose, two lungs will mean the difference between life and death. Childerhose suffers from a rare lung disease. Last week, his condition worsened. His wife, Sarah Taylor, has started a social media campaign, including a Facebook page to encourage people to sign up as organ donors. Taylor told CBC News that there are over 9.1 million people in Ontario who are not registered as organ donors. She hopes the campaign will help her husband and other families in need. For more information on the campaign, visit our website, jnmjournal.com. When the Oscars are broadcast in a few weeks, listen carefully. More than 50 of the nominees are Sheridan alumni. They have contributed to 11 films nominated for the Oscars, including Life of Pi, The Hobbit, and Snow White and the Huntsman. The Oscars will air on February 24th. The NHL is back in full swing and so is the spending. Data released by Monera says fans are spending at record numbers in local bars. Tanya Overholt has our story. One Kyle Ventura, the backhand, Louis George can't quite squeeze it. Paul Vandeveld cleans up. It's been almost a week since the start of the shortened NHL season and the stats show that fans are not holding a grudge. According to a 680 report, Monera's data shows a 9% increase in credit card spending before and during the opening games. Yeah, I've been going to the bar a little bit more, watching hockey games there. It's been fun. 
Yeah, it's back already, and I'm out to the bars and picking up gear and stuff, and just, you know, the game center is a little bit cheaper, so I bought it so I can watch all the games online and stuff. The report also showed that spending in Toronto bars increased more than 12%. Marquis bar manager Daniel Solomon can vouch for the change, too. Normally, normally we're pretty busy till about 8 o'clock on a Wednesday. Um, it just kind of stretched the night out. We had about 60 people in here. So there you have it. 680 News Data is holding up here at Sheridan as the students seem to be spending more, if not the same, on NHL paraphernalia and bar spending this season. I'm Tanya Overholt with Eye on Sheridan. Things go fast on Highway 401, and this was no exception. A woman on her way to a Brampton hospital to deliver her baby ended up giving birth instead on the side of the freeway in Milton. It happened this morning at around 3.30 near Highway 25. The woman's husband frantically called 911, and a police officer who beat paramedics to the scene ended up helping with the delivery. He came in handy afterward, too, using a piece of crime scene tape to tie off the umbilical cord. The newborn girl and her mom were taken to the Milton Hospital and both are doing well. Thanks for watching. For more news, check out our website, jnmjournal.com, and make sure to tune in for Live at 5. I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer.